Hey everybody, welcome back to the shop. This video is uh, kind of being inspired by the fact that winter is about over, which means uh, spring and then summer right behind it. And those are the seasons where I have the least amount of time to spend in the shop. So I've put together this video, which is going to be a walkthrough of the design I've done using Fusion 360. For those of you who are watching these videos to gather design ideas for your own build, this video should jumpstart that for you because really the rest of it is, you know, cutting and grinding and drilling and tapping and things of that nature. Uh, I will keep the drawings up to date. If you follow me on Instagram, I'll, I'll try and put tidbits out there uh, that show change when they occur. Um, I already know of a couple. They're pretty minor. Um, but for now, let's go inside and I'll walk you through the design and you guys can continue on in your own builds. Sitting down here at the computer, I just wanted to show you guys what the link to this drawing is going to take you to. Uh, there is a place where you can put comments. I don't watch these, so you're better off putting comments in videos at this point in time. If you're not familiar with Fusion 360, regardless of what you do, whether it's sheet metal, milling, uh, additive manufacturing, I would highly encourage you to learn to play with Fusion 360. So here is the drawing in its rendered view. You can also uh, download it into Fusion 360 and do whatever you want. So that was just a quickie. Uh, there'll be a link to this in the video description. All right, jumping right into Fusion. Here is the model of the machine I'm building. It is not a cantilever design. There will be a Y axis over here on this other side. The mirroring function is not working the way I expect. It's leaving some parts out, so it's not important to the design. In fact, you can see that my gantry right here isn't even the full width of my table. That's kind of beside the point. So you've seen me build the table already. Let's turn off the table because that's not overly important, and let's get to the heart of the matter. So this is the assembly as it will be completed. And you've seen parts of this as far as uh, in the last video I showed what the x-axis uh, x was going to look like as far as the plate. And this is what, when it's complete, the y-axis plates are going to look like. Oh, that was a fun chunk of thunder. You can see we've got these things that I always want to call control horns. <laughs> I'll remember the name shortly. Anyways, we've got these in here. There's a spring that will go to the middle. We've got a pair of idlers down to the motor. Our fixed bearings are at the top, just like on the x-axis. And then if we swing around here a little bit, you can see we've got the motor. And let's see if I can get up here to the top real quick. Uh, that's in the way. Let's go to the bottom. Sorry about that. So in here, again, end of video, there will be some exploded uh, exploded diagrams. You can see I've got a two-to-one step down between the motor and uh, the jack shaft. As of right now, this version, <clears throat> well, it's 62 now, version 62 of this drawing is accurate in all of its dimensions for the motor plate as well as the Y. The whole locations, the whole sizes, everything is accurate. However, if you start looking really close, um, one of the things that is not accurate is the size of the jack shaft and the bearings. The holes are correct, but if we look real close down in here, you can see the bearing doesn't match the hole size. I have different bearings, and I changed the jack shaft to just be a single diameter, its whole length and I just haven't updated that part of the model. So this is really the 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 heart of it. Uh, the lightning holes up here are more just to reduce the amount of material and the weight. This is uh, half inch aluminum in my build. These are the NEMA 34 motors I'm going to use. And then what's going on up here is not completely modeled yet. This is another NEMA 34 and this is a 10 to 1 planetary gear drive and you say 
Why, Preston, did you do that? This is going to run a belt across the uh, x-axis, and there'll be a idler down here at the end, and it'll be solid on the carriage. I did this because I did. Um, I could very easily direct drive the belt. These motors have a ton of torque, and in fact, I saw a production machine just the other day that was uh, doing direct drive off rack and pinion with NEMA 23s, and it, it performed nicely. What I wanted was, I, want, I was afraid of not enough uh, resolution. I wanted to make sure there was plenty of resolution in the steps so that I could get real fine cuts. I understand it's a plasma cutter, you're only going to get so much detail, but that was what was going on. I have the 2 to 1 belt step down on the Y, and on the X, I just, I cheaped out, or, or I didn't, I chickened out. I, I, I took the easy route, and I bought a 10 to 1 planetary gear setup. It was expensive, not necessarily something I would encourage everybody to do, but that's why there's no belt step down or direct drive modeled here. I don't know, I think, uh, you know, if you're open to playing around, direct drive the thing. You got plenty of torque, and maybe I'm just uh, concerned about something that doesn't exist. It will be easy for me to play with as far as just removing the, the planetary gear and, and move the motor up. I have the belt modeled in here, and I have one of the belt tensioners in here. Let's put the Y-axis back in, or the Y-rail back in. So for the tension adjustment, it's just a uh, clearance hole through the plate and a nut that will allow you to drag back this whole block. And this block is just a, a clamping type of affair. Um, I kind of want to go to the extent of maybe putting some teeth in there, but uh, we'll see how all, how all that plays out. That was kind of fast. The y-axis is going to be welded to this little plate right here, and then the plate is going to be bolted on. The thing that isn't in this drawing, I guess there's several things that aren't in this drawing, and you'll have to help, you'll have to stay tuned a little longer than I expected. On the other end, instead of being welded directly to the plate like it is here, this is actually going to have that an insert that will slide inside this tube welded to the plate. There'll be some oblonged holes, which will give me some adjustability there. So that's how I'm going to get the adjustability in my width to make up for you know imperfections and uh, the fact that welding won't be perfect. In addition, this is 2x2 two two tubing. Again, take the drawing. You can use the dimension tool all you want when you get it down into your own copy. I'm going to be cutting lightning holes in this piece of tubing. It really provides very little structural importance. With this piece of flat stock on edge, it'll hold more than enough weight. Uh, the the x-axis is not going to be heavy at all, not like on the uh, spindle machine or on the router. Now let's get rid of some more of these things here. Bell crank, that was the damn word I was looking for. Let's get where let's whoop. let's get rid of the Y rail. Uh we get rid of the drive pulley assembly and get rid of the gantry, the Y motor, the X motor. We're just gonna get everything down to this plate. The bell crank assemblies are both gone. And that's the naked, almost naked plate. Uh, fixed bearing assemblies are gone. So this is the plate that I've been working on. You can, and you've seen, well, by the time this video comes out, you probably won't have seen it. I did these in wood on my router first to make sure everything was the way I wanted. And now I've done it in aluminum. The reality is the outside perimeter and this these holes I've put in here are are, are meaningless uh, to functionality. As long as the holes are in the right locations or the right alignment to each other, you're set. You'll notice, that, notice these are counterboard holes. That is so when the Y motor is in there, these the heads of these cap screws are below the surface. Uh, you need that because when you turn on the bell crank, 
they have to be able to clear those. When I assemble this, there's going to be, I have some real thin shim washers that I'll be tightening all these up with and make sure there isn't slop in them. <clears throat> Making sure that this pivot point right here is in is tight is going to be, I believe, pretty important. On the back side here, on this motor plate, let's see if I can isolate it. This is the second most important piece of this machine, in my opinion. The spacing between these four holes and the center of this hole are what give me my center to center dimension so that the belt is tight and I don't need any kind of idler or tensioner. Um, I don't want anything variable in there like a spring loaded tensioner because that will introduce backlash. I got a little crazy up here. I, I put a counterboard hole in here and then the standoffs. <laughs> the standoffs have got their own. Uh, shoulder in them. Let me isolate this. Yeah, I, I put shoulders in these. Seriously overkill. Uh, not necessary at all. Let's talk a little bit about the belt and idler assembly. One of the things I did was I moved these idlers up from my original design and the reason for that was to tuck this belt up. Let's rotate this other direction was to tuck that belt up fairly close to the underside of the tube or the rail. This right here is half an inch and I was able to do that by a adding some standoffs, these little standoffs back here, bringing it out away from the V-belt and then because it's all modeled in 3D I just started moving them up until such a time as it cleared the top of this shoulder bolt head and if everything works out, uh, the clearance should be just fine. Okay, I've hidden everything now up to what I call the Y motor assembly. So this is a Y axis motor assembly. And we can get a little bit better look at what's going on here. I got a series of standoffs. They've got 5 16 bolts in from each end. My NEMA 34 is attached to the back side. And then I've modeled this uh, two to one belt drive set of pulleys and belt that I bought off of Amazon, I believe. I'll have links to where I got that um, in the video description. You can see the jack shaft here. The jack shaft is no longer a step down shaft. It's 10 millimeter all the way across. Uh, when I went to machine it, I scratched my head and went, that's silly. I have some nice 10 millimeter bearings and just be done with it so that's how that happened the material here could be lightened up if you really wanted to this is done in 3 8 aluminum mostly because my bearings are set in if we hide If we hide that 40 tooth cog, you'll see there's another bearing in here and it's recess. And again, not the right one, but it's recessed into, um, into this hole right here. Now let's bring everything back to the, back to the top here. There we go. Plasma table and all. I think that's most of the salient points. I'll do some exploded diagrams here just for those of you who want to see it without downloading it in Fusion. For those of you who are wanting to uh, design your own, this is everything you need. Good luck in your design. Well, thanks for joining me, and I will tack on a couple of exploded animations here for your viewing pleasure. As always, uh, comments are appreciated. Feel free to hit the subscribe and the notification bell if you want to see more of these as this project continues on. As a tickler, I'm also doing some upgrades to my CNC router. Big hopes for that, and those videos will be coming out as well. Take care, everyone. See ya.